Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Bean. Welcome to my channel and today I'm bringing you guys a video if you should summon or not on the ReZero collaboration or uh, event banner, whatever you want to call it, that is dropping on global this coming update. For most people, it'll be on the 11th, so Tuesday, the, or if you're like, depending on your time zone, if you're like in the US, then maybe it'll be on Monday night for you on the 10th. But regardless, 10th slash 11th is when we're getting this update. And yeah. Uh, it's a pretty good event. Of course, with it brings four new heroes. And I'm going to tell you guys first what they do, then what their banner looks like, and then at the end, if you should summon or not, depending if you're a free to play, light spender, whale, all that good stuff. If you prefer PvP, PvE, uh, dive more into detail as the video goes on. But yeah. Alright, so Re Zero. First, we need to take a look at the banner, uh, what units is or are on the banner. We already know. Uh, so yeah, first, I guess I'll do a quick... I'll go over this in detail, don't worry. So we have Amelia. There's her. We have Rem. Ram, who is free, by the way. Everyone gets a free copy of Ram, so keep that in mind. And Beatrice for the last one. Alright, so here we have a nice picture of all four of them. Beatrice, Amelia... Rem, and then Ram. Ram is the free one. And the usual, you can, you get a free multi, by the way, unless they change it, but for sure guaranteed at least the multi by logging in throughout a week, I believe. And yeah, 10 tickets, you get 10 tickets for free, that's one multi, or you can summon with gems with 30 gems for a multi, you already know the deal. And a single ticket is the equivalent of three gems summoned. But the banner, all right. This is the banner. And first, you need to know this before you dive into it, because the rates aren't that good. Uh, let's see. So as you can see, we have all four featured units or collab units. Amelia, Rem, Rem, Beatrice at a 0.25%, and everyone else is at a 0.2%. And this is bad. Uh, if you're going for the... Not even if you're going for the 6-6. Six, six, if you're going for just a single copy, you have to get extremely lucky to pull all of them at 600. It is possible, but it's uh, unlikely. But yeah, besides that, the same it's literally the same banner that we have on the Stranger Things one, unless they change it, but I doubt it. It's a bunch of uh, like old characters. The only good ones probably like Escanor. Uh, maybe the green one. And besides that, I believe Red King was on there. And yeah, just every everyone else on here is old. It's like a bunch of sins. At least there'll be SSR coins. But yeah, that's the banner, so just keep that in mind. And since it is a collaboration banner, of course, it is a 600 milestone. So at 300 gems, you get a guaranteed random SSR of the pool. So out of all of these, you have a chance of pulling any one of these. And then at 600, you get to choose your waifu, whichever one you want. Amelia, Rem, Ram, or Beatrice. And yeah, that's the banner. I'll come back to that towards the end. But let's take a quick look at the characters. Alright, so let's take a quick look at... Ram, who is the one you guys get for free just by playing the event and doing the missions. A single copy for free, which is pretty good because honestly, she is uh, probably the second best one. Or number one, in my opinion, if you just go over like just her entire kit in general. But yeah, let's take a quick look. She is green, re zero, twin maid, sister Ram. What makes her very good and super, super dope that she is free is her passive. Amazing Elder Sister increases unknown allies' basic stats by 20%. This makes the unknown uh, meta full human... No, the full unknown team that much stronger. And you know who else is unknown? Festival Merlin. And she gets a massive buff when she is run on a specific team, which I'll probably go towards on the end of the video. But that specific team is the one that is the most popular and one of the best ones to use on JP currently and it's what the top 100 players use to push the top 100 and achieve, uh, achieve the number well let's just say the rank 1, 2, and 3 uh, players on top 100 all use the same team this one with RAM in it but yeah this is huge in increases allies basic stats by 20% this is the same as basically Sario's buff which Sario increases goddesses but RAM's increases unknowns and her cards are uh whatever she's mostly a backline unit so let's take a quick look though 
of Vula. Inflicts damage equal to 200% of attack on one enemy, and then it is a stun card at rank 2 and 3. This is the same of same as Goddess Liz. Yeah, exactly the same card as Goddess Liz, because at rank 2, it cancels stances on one enemy, and then inflicts damage multiplier 200% at rank 2, 250 at rank 3 of attack, and then stuns for one turn at rank 2, and three two turns at rank 3. Same exact card as Goddess Liz. You know how annoying that can be. And her second card is a Rupture card, uh, AoE. Inflicts Rupture damage equal to 100%, 150%, and 250%, depending on the rank. You should eat it, is the rank. Uh, this is pretty good. Again, she is actually decent, but she's mostly a backline unit. And her ultimate, don't stand in Ram's way, inflicts damage equal to 300% of attack on all enemies, decreases attack rated stats by 30% for 3 turns. This attack, or this AoE ult, is actually pretty strong at 6-6. Six, six. And it also decreases attack rate stats by 30%, which is pretty a dramatic decrease. Because if they have full Gother passive, for example, facing against the green Gother, this makes it so he only has a buff of 5%, because he buffs himself by 35, subtract 30%, so only a increase to the entire enemy's team five, uh, of attack rate stats by 5% if they're using green Gother and his passive is max. Uh, besides that, that is Ram. And associations, uh, I would suggest just Hauser so you get more CC, HP. Uh, yeah, don't use Bond. Regen doesn't give you anything. Plus 1,440 HP is going to boost up your CC a bit. And then that's Ram. Let's take a quick look at Ram, who is actually pretty good. All of them are very good, except for one, which you probably already know, which is Beatrice. But I'll cover to her towards the end. But... Let's take a look at uh, Rem, twin sister of Rem. So ReZero, she is red, twin maid sister Rem, her passive sister of the Oni clan. When a hero uses skill or move skills to rank up a skill and gain ulti and move gauge, increases attack rate stats by 5% for 3 turns up to 5 times. This is huge. If there are 5 or more ulti and move gauge orbs, it covers 30% of max HP. So basically, if she uses a skill, moves cards, anything, and gains ultimate move gauge, she increases her attack rate stats up to 5 times. And that is an increase of 25% to her attack rate stats if you fill her passive all the way, which is a very big increase. And pair that up with the 20% basic increase or stat increase from Ram. No, yeah, Ram. Uh, she's going to hit like a monster. She's going to hit like a truck. But... Yeah, she is very good. Also, by the way, she don't forget, she recovers 30% of max HP if you get full gauge, which is very nice. 30% is a considerable amount of HP to get for free. And her first card, she hits super hard. And let's say her passive really works uh, well with her first ability, because that's Amplify. And she gets a, each one, each time she increases attack rate stats, that counts as one buff. And if you get full passive, that's five buffs. And what does uh, buffs uh, pair up with? Amplify. Because Amplify increases the damage dealt by 30% per active buff on self. Alright, but yeah, her first card is a single target Amplify card. Inflicts Amplify damage equal to 180%, 270%, and 450% at rank 2 and 3 of attack on one enemy. This is super insane hitting hard. Uh, she, she, she hits super hard on this card. I can't wait to test her out. She's probably one of my favorite units from the collaboration and the series in general. Uh, but her second card is actually very toxic if you can get level 2 and 3 off. Uh, it's Boisterous Dance of Oni. Did I say the first card? Yeah. Oh, this was Crushing Hit, by the way. Alright, but let's see. Inflicts damage equal to 130% of attack on all enemies. Decreases ultimate move damage by 20% for one turn. That's pretty good. But at rank 2 and 3 is where the real, real uh, toxicity comes in. So... At rank 2, inflicts damage equal to 195% of attack on all enemies. This is AoE, by the way. Decreases ultimate move damage by 30% and restricts ultimate move effects for one turn. And it's the same uh, wording at rank 3. However, the multiplier is 325% and then 50% of ultimate move damage decrease. But let's say you get a level 3 off. This is insane because not only are you decreasing the ults, let's say you have an assault melee ult that you're going to face if he ults you the ult is going to do 50 percent less damage 
And on top of that, it also restricts ult move effects for two turns. So let me give you a scenario. Let's say again, as the whole melee he ults you, not only is he going to do half of the damage, but he also won't get those, you know, those three buffs he gives himself, because I believe he buffs himself of uh, his basic stats by 50% when he ults. That won't work. It'll just be a damaging ult without his uh, boost to his buffs, or boost to his basic stats by 50%. And that that is very good. He won't be hitting for anything. Same thing for like uh, Escanor. If you have the one and he isn't immune, he has a debuff immunity, you use this. He's going to do 50% less damage and his death damage won't work. If you use this on, uh, let's see, Goddess Liz, Green Gother, Liz's, re no, Liz's uh, ult heal won't work. Her reflect won't work. Gother's uh, ultimate move gauge won't work. Uh, that, but yeah, this is, so, this is such a good card and uh, it's even better that it's aoe to all enemies it's not single target this is extremely broken because if they say they all have ult up and they ult all at the same time their effects are not going to work which is huge let's say that usually the combo is like you already know glue eater so let's say they have goddess liz ult ready and ult go through ult ready they use both of those they're not going to heal they're not going to get the reflect and when he, he you are going to get hit with the go through damage ultimate but you won't lose your gauges which is very nice yeah, she's so good. I can't wait to test them all out. I will be going in on the banner. I don't think I mentioned this, but I will be 6-6-ing all of them. It's not even a question. So look out for that. Inflicts uh, her ultimate. Night Parade of the Blue Oni. Inflicts shatter damage. Shatter is uh, ignores resistance. Equal to 420% of attack on enemies. AoE. At 6-6, six, six, she hits insanely hard. As long as you don't go against the Liz shield. Or a Festival Merlin ultimate shield. Besides that, you should... At 6-6, six, six, you should one-shot. It's uh, not even funny how much damage he hits for. Especially if you have a lot of her buffs up. If you have full passive, 25% increase the basic stats. And her ultimate 6-6 six, six with Rupture, or I mean Shatter, ignores resistance. It's GG, it's a wipe. But yeah, there's her. Association, I would suggest to use probably Jericho. So you get that extra attack. And resistance, or maybe you could use Escanor if you just want a bit more extra resistance. So she's a bit more tanky. But yeah, that has been Rem was pretty good and let's take a look at Amelia who is honestly if you are a whale or you get extremely lucky is probably the best character on this collaboration and I'll tell you guys why so 3-0 she is blue ruler candidate Amelia her passive when the hero receives attack from the same enemy two or more times during enemy's turn cleanse all debuffs from the allies and freezes the enemy for two turns spirit user is her passive and this passive is very good. So basically, if the same opponent or same enemy, let's say Escanor attacks you twice. Escanor attacks you twice during your turn or his turn. You remove all debuffs that you have on all your enemies and then you freeze that one enemy that attacked you twice for two turns. So that's a freeze on Escanor. It is unfortunate if it is the one though because he does have debuff immunity. So you have to factor it into that. But if it's anyone besides the one, then you have a freeze on them for two turns. Which is very nice because then they can't do anything. And no, not really... Yeah, no one's really running a cleanse right now. So there's that. A free freeze for two turns. But Amelia, not only is she super good, she is super toxic. Uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at her. Alright, so her first card... Puck, please. It's a uh, level one. It's a freeze. Freeze is one enemy for one turn. Okay. But at rank two, though, it's where it gets a bit more toxic. Inflicts damage equal to 220% of attack on one enemy and freezes for one turn. Okay. So now instead of uh, only not being just a freeze, it also does damage. When the freeze is removed by using skills, ultimate moves, or turns have passed, inflict damage equal to 20% of the remaining HP. And this is... Very toxic, because not only is it giving you a bit of damage when you use the ability, and then it freezes them after, but if you break the ice, uh, it doesn't even matter. As long as it breaks, they do damage depending on the percentages of the rank. So, rank 2, it does 20% of the remaining HP as damage, and at rank 3, it's 40%. And the same thing, at rank 3, the freeze is for 2 turns, multipliers increase from 220 to 360. So let's just take a rank 3 for example. If you use a rank 3, they will get 360% of the attack that you have on one enemy and then freeze them for two turns. And then if you break the ice before the two turns or after the two turns, it doesn't matter as long as it breaks. Even if it breaks by itself, 
you will inflict additional damage equal to 40% of the remaining HP. And basically, you can just stun the entire team. Essentially, it's the phrase, but... Yeah, you can just freeze the entire team and just build your ults up with her, and that's GG, that's wipe. It's no question. But her second ability is honestly probably what makes her very good as well. Not even gonna lie. Uh, Ao Huma. It is basically the Gother Pumpkin Bombs. That's what it is. Copy and paste. Well, let's take a quick look. Inflicts damage equal to 120% of attack on all enemies. Depletes one ultimate move gauge orb at the end of the enemy's turn for one turn. Literally, you know Green Gother? This is the same exact card, and you know how powerful and toxic that can be. And at rank 2, it depletes two ultimate move gauges at the end of the enemy's turn for two turns. And at rank... Uh, rank 3, I mean. And at rank 2, it uh, depletes two orbs at the end of the enemy turn for only one turn. But this is very nice. This means so you, you can not only can you control ultimate move gauges with her, you can also freeze. And if you get attacked twice by twice or more by the same enemy, and the enemies turn, you freeze them again. So technically you could freeze the entire team if they don't know what they're doing. They attack your Amelia twice, and you have two freezes, you could freeze the entire team. And the freeze lasts for two turns, by the way, from her passive, and two turns from rank three. If they attack you twice, you basically get Minus the damage, you get a free level 3 freeze on t an enemy. And there's no limit to this. They keep, keep attacking you and they keep uh, keep getting freezed. She's so good. And the reason why I said at the beginning of this, uh, of going over her, is if you are a whale or get super lucky, she's the best unit. Is because her ultimate is literally a copy and paste of Lost Vein Meliodas' ultimate. And you know how hard that hits at 6-6. Six, six. Especially if you have cards in hand. It's a wipe. I don't care who you have. I don't care if you have like a full tank team or anything. You're getting wiped. You're getting clapped with a 6-6 Lost Vein ult. This is what it is. Inflict Secret Technique damage. Secret Technique, of course, 20% additional damage per hero skill. And this ranks up depending on your uh, ultimate. This is only at plus 20% per additional skill at 1 out of 6. Damage equal to 300% of attack on all enemies and deals damage with attribute advantage regardless of attribute. So at 6-6, six, six, let's say you have her 6-6, six, six, you will out, or you get super lucky in like one or two rotations. She does 450% of attack on all enemies, and then she does 60% additional damage per hero skill, or basically card in your hand. And if you're 6-6 six, six and you have like one or two cards, yeah, that's, that's a wipe. I don't care who you are, you're dead. So this is why I'm saying that she is the best. And honestly, for association, I would say probably whoever you want because you don't really have like any attack defense or hp which is gives you the most cc but i would probably say merlin if you have her built out crit resistance is also also nice to have so that way if she does get no this is a crit chance uh honestly i would say go probably go for liz resistance that way you tank a bit more a bit tanky but you could use merlin if you have her built out i know not everyone has these liz's built so most of you probably have a Merlin built out, so use her. But if you have a Liz, I would recommend Liz, so you get that plus 24.6% resistance just for a bit extra tankiness. But yeah, that has been Amelia. Now let's take a look at Beatrice, who unfortunately isn't that good, but she is still fun if you can make her work. Alright, so Caretaker of the Forbidden Library, Beatrice, she is blue. Her passive, Caretaker of the Forbidden Library, increases the hero's HP-related stats by 5%. For each unknown ally in battle, recover HP of unknown allies by 60% of the hero recovers when using skills. Her passive, when uh, she first came out, we thought it was going to be absolutely broken, but it's not good. Essentially, uh, if you run a, she's supposed to run a full re-zero team with her, so you can max her passive all the way. Or not even re-zero, but any unknown ally, basically an unknown team. And you increase HP related stats by 5% for each of them. And this recovery HP of unknown allies by 60% of the amount the hero recovers when using skills is basically what she life steals when she attacks. And she doesn't really do that much damage to start with, to begin with. So that means you won't be healing for as much or for anything, really. It's unfortunate, but her passive is there. Let's take a look at her first card, Mana Collection. Inflicts damage equal to 180% of attack on one enemy and life steals 40% of the damage, 270% at rank 2, 400% at rank 3, 
Now life steal is 60% at rank 2 and life steal is 100% of damage at rank 3. This is actually a pretty uh, hard hitting card at rank 3 for her mana collection. Alright, so her second ability, I wonder if I should let you know. Inflicts the spare. The spare is uh, basically if you crit, you heal a percentage back of the da total damage done, your HP. And inflicts the spare damage equal to 130% of attack on all enemies at rank 1, 195 at rank 2, and 325% at rank 3. And yeah, you need to crit for this card to work. And the unfortunate thing is that her crit chance... Actually, no, her crit chance is pretty good, 70%. Uh, but yeah, she doesn't do as much damage, because her attack... You know, like her pierce rate's pretty bad, 40%. Uh, her attack is okay. Crit damage is super low, 110%. That's garbage. And yeah, she doesn't really... She's not really a DPS, but her kit basically like wants her to be a DPS, because the more damage she does, the more work she's going to put in. Not only with her heals, but also for her passive. But it is unfortunate. And her ultimate is uh, pretty cool, though. It's uh, Expert of Yin Magic. Inflicts damage equal to 350% of attack on all enemies, and life steals 30% of the damage. It's an AoE ult, and AoE ults are always welcomed, because that means you do damage to everyone, not just a single, single person. And, yeah. Uh, that's her ult. For her Link... Buddy, I would say if you're going to run her, use King because this way you get uh, 1440 extra HP, which does increase your CC. However, if you have Gother, you could use Gother so you increase your pierce rate. And increase the pierce rate is always welcome. Almost 20% at a 19.2 increase to her pierce rate if you use Gother. And her pierce rate is, yeah, on, on the bit on the low end, 40%. So that would bring her to 60%, not including cosmetics, super awakening, all that stuff. So, the decision is yours. I would probably say King, though, if you run him or run her. And yeah, that's basically been all the characters. We've covered Beatrice, we've covered Amelia, we covered Rem, and we covered Rem. And the banner, of course, let's go back to this. Now we're going to start getting into whether you should summon or not. So, the first thing you should keep in mind, again, is this terrible banner rate. Unless they change it, which I doubt. And... Yeah, if you are going for a single copy, you could probably, if you're lucky... Uh, get one copy of each uh, and 600 but if not you'll probably have to go two rotations to get a single copy of each that's how on uh, not on on rare that's how hard it is to pull these units with this garbage rate up and if you've seen my stranger things summons where I went 3600 gems deep and didn't even six six them that was the same percentage as this current b uh, banner that we're gonna get and the same percentage as Stranger Things, 0.25% rate up on all four characters and 0.2% on the rest. And you know how my summons went. Terrible. That was really disgusting. I couldn't believe it. But it is what it is. But that's, hopefully I get insane luck for ReZero because I got super shafted on Stranger Things. Uh, at least I hope. But yeah, keep that in mind. So if you are free to play, honestly, unless you have 1,200 gems or 600 gems ready, I would suggest... Uh, they're, they're good. The units that I would say that are really needed are, for, of course, Ram, but however, she's free. So you, if you go 600, you know for sure you don't have to select her at the 600 mark at Milestone. You can skip her because you get a free copy. Don't don't uh, go for Beatrice at your 600. If you pull her during your rotations, that's okay. That's a that's a extra hero for the box CC and a collab unit. But So that means you could either choose Rem... Or ram for your final two options and honestly let's see is there anything else i need to cover real quick the costumes real quick okay if you are a spender or a light spender you would unfortunately have to uh, spend money to get all their cosmetics because that's how it is with every collab they're only up for two weeks during the collaboration uh, duration and after two weeks once the collaboration ends they leave as well you won't be able to pick them up with gems it sucks i know but it is what it is. We can't do anything about it. Uh, unfortunately, if you actually want these units to like maximum potential, the best they could be, you will need to pick these up. However, even without, even if you're only one six and no cosmetics, they're they're still pretty good. You'll just have to completely max them out with the cosmetics that they have. I'm pretty sure they give like a free outfit for each of them uh, from doing events and stuff. So there's that. But these are what her all of their cosmetics look like. Pretty cool. I will be getting all of them. 
Uh, but yeah, okay. That's it. That's it for that. So let's get back to Shuju Summon. So if you're free to play, again, if you only have... If you have 600 gems available for you, I'd say go for it because then you have a chance of pulling Ram. Because, again, you get a Ram for free, so you don't have to worry about that. Any copies you pull for her are just dupes for her, or unless you get a lot of dupes for her, then you can trade them in for any one of them. Because, uh, also, with every collaboration, you can trade in dupes for a unit that you want. So let's say you get super unlucky and you pull three Beatri no, you pull four Beatrices. So one for the to actually get the hero and then three dupes. Instead of having her one uh, four out of six, you can trade three of uh, Beatrice dupes or any dupes of that matter for any characters for one character that you want. So let's say you have three Beatrice dupes, you want Amelia or let's say you want Ram. You trade in three dupes for Beatrice or whoever you have and then you get the character that you want and it's unlimited. If you get so many dupes for a lot of characters or collab characters, you can just trade them in infinitely. There's no limit to how many you can trade to. So there's that. But okay, yeah. Free to play. I would say, honestly, go, go for Rem. Because she, if all the popular team to run is Festival Merlin, uh, Ram in the back, Goddess Liz, and then either. Rem, Rem because she's a bit more free to play friendly, or Amelia if you ever wailed out, and I'll go a bit more into detail in a minute. But yeah, that is uh, what I would say if you're free to play or light spender. That is honestly your best bet. However, if you you can use Amelia, only bad thing is that you won't probably get her six six unless you do honestly realistically like four to five rotations. Or sometimes even I've seen players on JP Korean version get super shafted and have to go six rotations to pick her at the guaranteed six times to get her uh, six out of six. But it is what it is. And yeah, Rem, she is very good. So yeah, if you're okay, if you ever to play Light Spender, I would say you get Rem for free, so that's that covered. And then choose Rem. Because she's more free to play friendly. However, if you want to try out the most popular team on JP or in the most one of the best teams, which is Festival Merlin, Amelia, Goddess Liz, and then Ram in the back, then go for Amelia. Even at 1-6, you can still wipe the entire enemy field, but you would need basically an entire hand of cards for her. It is possible, because people have wiped uh, me before on PvP on Global with a 1-6 Lost Vein because I checked the ults, but they had a lot of Lost Vein cards in hand. So it is possible. Just a bit difficult to do. It's easier the more dupes you have. At 6-6, six, six, it's you only need like one card, if even that, to one-shot. And Beatrice, again, if you are going to 600, I don't care if you're a free-to-play uh, Light Spender or Whale. Well, Whales, it doesn't matter. If you're a Whale, I already know you're going to buy all the tickets, summon all them, and 6-6 six, six them. So for you, it doesn't matter really. Uh, light spenders, if you only like gonna, if you pick up just like the costumes, I would say, then for sure go for Amelia. Then try and get as many dupes of her as possible. If you are going a lot of rotations, even if you're free to play, if you have like, let's say, I don't know, there's some people who I know have like a thousand, uh, what is it, eight hundred gems saved up, and say they're going like three rotations, two rotations. If you get a lucky with a bunch of Amelias, then I would say go for Amelia, but. Uh, like all in all honestly this collaboration is better than stranger things in my opinion so like yeah overall i would say this is a more of a summon than stranger things was so if you skip stranger things i'm assuming you either skipped it for re-zero which is currently about a drop or festival zeldris chandler or you could be saving for uh festival arthur and uh the what's it called the commandment esterosis absorbed which I haven't covered on my channel because I mostly only cover global news unless like it's super big on JP and Korean. But yeah, I'll make sure to cover those when they do release on global. But if you're skipping ReZero, then I'm assuming that's what you're saving for. Either one of those two. Or you could be saving for a future character, I don't know. But my opinion, I would say if you have the gems available to you, summon for 600 gems. Because these characters will probably never come back. Uh, same thing with Stranger Things. And if you don't care for collection purposes and you just want like 
the units that you want or meta units, then you can skip them. The only thing is that you won't have the opportunity to get them again. And you could still survive on PvP and PvE. These are mostly uh, PvP units. That's where they shine. However, Ram does make some teams viable on PvP or PvE content because of her passive and of increasing unknown basic stats by 20%. But yeah, that's what I would say is what you guys should do as my advice if you should summon or not on ReZero. But yeah, that's basically been it. All I wanted to cover. Uh, we went over all the characters. Ram, Ram, Amelia, Beatrice, and all their cosmetics that are available. Uh, the banner rate. Yeah, banner rate. Uh, how unlucky it is or how lucky you need to be to get the characters that you want. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Currently on the road to 500 subscribers. If you like the video, uh, leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. And if you need any additional help or you're not sure of anything that I've covered in this video regarding whether you should summon, uh, comment down below and I'll gladly assist you with any questions that you have, additional questions or clarifications. I usually respond right away unless I'm either super busy or I'm asleep. But yeah, that's been it for me today and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.